Hi there, everyone, and welcome to part two of Mr. Mellon's Selection and Layers. Uh, in part one, we made this face. Um, we used a few different tools. We used the Quick Select tool. We used a rectangular marquee and used the magic wand to uh, deselect the white. We've done some transforms, uh, and we've played around with layers. If you want the original file, it can be found on my website, noted below. Um, we're going to continue on now, and we're going to sort of finish off the face with a few other uh, little parts and maybe some slightly more complicated things. So uh, one of the things that we looked at last time was uh, this uh, this lasso set of tools over here. There's the magnetic lasso and then there's two others. There's the regular lasso and the polygon lasso. Um, we're going to use the magnetic lasso and the polygon lasso together. Okay, and we're going to uh, do that to get this bow tie. So let me just get my uh, scene set up. I'm going to zoom in so I can fit this on screen. All right, so it's a little bit bigger. Now, the magnetic lasso does a pretty good job of anchoring itself to the edge, but the contrast isn't great here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of intentionally go right through the middle and not do a very good job of getting all the little ridges of the pasta. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add that later on. It's really easy to add. Um, Add to a selection in Photoshop. So let's say you've made a selection and it's not exactly right. Either you've done a little too much or a little too little. So we need a few extra pieces added to the selection. I'm going to go to the uh, polygon lasso tool. Okay. And right up here in the top left corner, you have a few different options, right? We can start a new selection or we can add to a selection. Now, add to a selection is also uh, shift will give you add and alt will give you subtract. So right now we're at add to a selection. I'm actually going to Take one more step and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more before I do this so you can see it. So I'm going to add to a selection. I can start anywhere in the middle. Okay, and I'm just going to go through this and click at each and every point of the bow tie pasta. All right, and you can see it simply is going to add to the selection. I can just go and close this off. You see, here's my little circle beside my selection tool. That means if I click there, it ends the selection. Left side looks pretty good. Let's go over here and uh, we'll get the other side. Now, there's a number of other ways of selecting in Photoshop too, and we'll get to a few of them, but uh, these tools are sort of the easiest ones to start with. So once again, close my selection. Now, if you want to be really picky, this section right here, I've screwed up. It's a little bit uh, the magnetic lasso grab the shadow rather than the pasta. For that, I'll just go to my regular lasso tool. And this time I'm going to go to Alt. All right, so I can hold down the Alt key and you'll see I'll get a little minus sign beside my tool. Or I can go to the top left corner and I can go to the third button over, which is subtract from selection. What I want to do here is I can work outside the zone and I'm just going to follow this contour as closely as I can. It's tough with a mouse and that's all I've got right here. Uh, not bad. I got a little bit of a little bit of a piece that I missed so I'll just switch it up, add to the selection and I'll just go through right that area there. Not bad. Pretty good. Okay so I've made my selection. Now one thing I forgot to do was go on to the the bottom layer. So go down to your layers palette, make sure you're on layer zero. Once you've made a selection, you've always got to make sure that you're on the right layer to select whatever you're trying to select. So I've got to be on layer zero to select the bow tie. Control C copies it, Control V pastes it. Now, when I go to my move tool, and actually I can first go and zoom out a little bit. I'll just zoom out so we can see it. Oh, that's a little too, too far out. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, I can go to my move tool and move my bow tie pasta wherever I want. Now, right now my layer one is showing up below my head. All right, so I've got to move layer one above my head. That's pretty good. And I can double click on that and I'll call it bow tie. Great, okay. Um, let's see, what else can we do? Uh, why don't we try a hat? The hat is a little bit tricky because uh, it's, it's sort of washed out. It's a little overexposed in the photograph. We have this mushroom and the white space around is almost as, as the same color as inside the mushroom. If I try the quick select tool, um, well, let's make sure I'm on the right layer. Okay. Uh, it does a pretty good job for most of it. Let's just see. But if you're, if you're a little, actually it's, oh, okay, there we go. Boom. Uh, sometimes we hit a, hit a spot and it's not exactly sure and uh, we get a little bit too much. So that one doesn't work. Oh, well, let's just try something else. We'll try the magic wand tool. 
we select the magic wand tool uh, not bad it gets quite a bit of it and we can sort of go through and do a lot of clicking but not exactly the best and again here we have this little space here that the color is just a little too close okay so not going to work the real question is how do you combine the tools in order to uh, make uh, the selection that you want so what we're going to try here is something a little bit different okay for this mushroom we're going to use the pen tool to make a selection uh, start by going to layer zero make sure that in your layers palette you're at layer zero and then go find the pen tool in your tools the pen tool um, kind of works uh, um, a little bit like the lasso tool what we're going to do is we can slowly go around and drop anchor points and we're just going to do that and it will draw a line, a nice straight line in between these points. If I want to, I can actually hold down on the point as I draw it, and that will make a curved line so I can get a little more uh, detailed. Now, you can do your curves before or you can do them after. It's kind of up to you. I'm just going to do this really quickly so that we can move on and finish this tutorial up. Um, I'm going to go all the way around, and when I get back to where I started, I can click on the first point what it does that makes a path now uh, rather than a selection like those marching ants this is a path it's a little different go over to the right to the paths layout uh, it's right underneath layers it's a little uh, little tab and it says work path right click on it and just go to make selection it gives you a dialog box uh, do you want to feather it do you want to make it a new selection you can take a look at those later on but for now you just click OK and there you go it's made a pretty decent uh, selection of the mushroom and it's pretty fast too uh, you don't have to worry about grabbing things that you don't want now as usual we're gonna go back to layers where our selection is copy control C paste control V and go to your move tool uh, again we're gonna have to move this over top of the head layer so that it actually is in the right place not bad okay I'll get it right up there I'm gonna get rid of my history so I can put it right up there on top of my head perfecto okay we're getting there we're almost done um, I guess maybe right at the end we can we can put in the nose and we can put in the mouth again you can use any of these different tools or any combinations uh, the pair for the nose probably works well using the quick select tool I'll give it a shot here one click on the pair Ooh, pretty good copy paste control C control V all right and then move that oh and it's got to go again above the head while I'm here I'm just going to name it I'm going to call it pear and uh, layer one above that I'm going to call that mushroom forgot to do that last time here's my pear layer and I'll just put that where it belongs very nice um, and then lastly let's uh, let's put in the mouth you can you can do the mouth any way you like um, I think I might use the pen tool for the mouth it's probably going to be one of the easier ways to do it I'm just going to go around very quickly and I'm going to try to get rid of the brown part from that kiwi okay very nice again so I've made my path okay there's my work path right click on it make a selection okay in layers I'm going to copy paste and I'll move that above the head and then I'll just take my move tool and move it over here and uh, I'll name that Kiwi. Okay, pretty good. We've got our layers on the right hand side. Um, and I guess the big thing is why do you why do you do the layers? And this is what I'd like to show you at the very end here. Um, if you didn't have the layers, you couldn't do this. Uh, I'm going to go to the head layer, and I'm going to adjust it somehow. So I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. Okay. Uh, this is the color so the hue is the color of something the saturation is like how much color and the lightness uh, is how much white or black paint you add to your paint so the hue for example I can take this melon and make it blue uh, I can make it neon blue or I can make it sort of just a little shade of blue almost gray if I want to um, again lightness I can add white and I can add black, I can darken it up. So this is a way of painting or tinting something very effectively without actually having to paint over it. I, I still keep the detail. 
If things weren't on their own layer, I couldn't do this. I would have to do everything separately. Um, I'd have to make a selection and then just adjust uh, hue and saturation to that selection. It becomes very difficult. The other thing is, as a workflow, um, I could take my head and I could I could duplicate my head. So here I'm going to take a head and I'm going to take a second head. And I'll call it head copy, and I could I could do that hue and saturation to the head copy. Let me just switch that very quickly. There we go. And then I could go to um, you know a friend or uh, I can say which one do you like better? Do you like this one or do you like this one? I'd have them both right there. It's very very simple, as long as everything is on its own layer. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you uh, have made a melon of your own. Again, you can find the original melon head file on my website listed below. And part one is somewhere uh, on the internet. I'm sure you can find out uh, uh, how to find that and get the basics. If you want to learn any more about Photoshop or 3ds Max or Adobe After Effects, keep checking out my YouTube page for more lessons. Bye-bye.